As part one of Heart of Darkness continues, Marlo sets off to the central station with a caravan of 60 men. There he learns that the boat he's supposed to pilot to the inner station has sunk and he now has to fish it out of the river and repair it. Marlo meets with the general manager of the central station, a man who inspires uneasiness. Though agitated about the situation at the inner station, the general manager repeats what we've already heard about Kurtz, calling him an exceptional man of the greatest importance to the company. A fire burns up a shed that stores trading goods and natives dance. An African man accused of setting the fire is beaten severely and Marlo hears his moans during the night. While waiting for Ribbits to arrive so he can repair the boat, Marlo quickly comes to view the company as foolish and life there as unreal. One group of pilgrims is supposed to be making bricks, but there are no brick making materials. Marlo says, it was as unreal as the philanthropic pretense of the whole concern. The only real feeling was a desire to get appointed to a trading post where ivory was to be had. In the brickmaker's quarters, Marlo sees a curious painting that the brickmaker said Kurtz did. The painting shows a sinister woman, draped and blindfolded, carrying a bright torch in the darkness. Marlo's at first annoyed when the brickmaker prods him for information, but he eventually realizes that the brickmaker thinks he's got connections to the top officers of the company. The brickmaker's trying to ingratiate himself to Marlo because he thinks Kurtz and Marlo are the new gang, the gang of virtue, people who will act as emissaries of pity and science and progress and devil knows what else. Instead of rivets for the boat, what arrives is an invasion, an infliction, a visitation. The El Dorado Exploring Expedition, a huge band led by the station manager's uncle. They've come to tear treasure out of the bowels of the land with no more moral purpose than there is in burglars breaking into a safe. In the details, Marlo relates about the inefficiency and lack of work at the central station and the backbiting and plotting to eke out a profit. This section harps on the hypocrisy, the greed, and the indifference of European colonial agents. The idea of colonialism as philanthropic and moral is shown to be a pretense. Pilgrims, not religious believers, but capitalist ones, seeking profit and percentages by plundering African resources.